everybody and welcome to another session of SEO's RAS webinar. Today, our guest is Svenchito Tampon from Philippines, from the uh, marketing and link building agency Sharp Rocket. He co-founded this agency and uh, also uh, talks about where to find fantastic links. And he's a, he's a famous for his talks about content promotion, link building, and so on. And uh, today's talk um, is going to be about the fantastic links you can find on uh, and, and link to your content. So how to discover the places for content promotion. And uh, of course, you can ask your questions at Slido. I think the link was has been posted into the into the chat and you can also see it now on your screen. So please ask your questions while Venchito will be presenting. And after end of his presentation, uh, we'll proceed with your questions and, uh, and he'll answer it. So Venchito, feel free to start your presentations whenever. And everybody, welcome again. All right. Hi, everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. And if you can actually hear me clearly, can you type ready in the chat box, please? Um, especially for our participants here. I guess so I can see. I'm not sure if I can, if I can see those um, reactions and replies, but I uh, really want to know. All right. Sounds good. Everything fine. Nice and clear. All right. Okay. So let me share with you my presentation. Okay. Um, yeah, can someone enable me to share the presentation? I'm not sure. All right, got it. Okay. All right, so in the next uh, 20, 30 minutes, I'll be sharing with you how you can find fantastic backlinks and how you can actually discover platforms, websites, and blogs where we, you can actually promote your your content, but um, if I can ask uh, a permission from you guys, um, is it okay if I can share with you a little bit of uh, what we do as a company and uh, what are some some of the things that we do uh, as a team? Uh, if that's okay with you, can you sh can you just type in yes? Just a quick background of who, who I am and uh, what I do. All right, gotcha. So here. This is my team, we are a team of millennials here in the Philippines. And to some of you who are not familiar in our, in our country, it's based in Southeast Asia. So whenever you're looking for some place for, you know, um, a tropical season, a tropical place, then Philippines is uh, good to go for you guys. And uh, what we do as a link building agency is that we help companies and e-commerce websites, as well as SEO agencies to be able to not just build backlinks, but for them to be able to build their authority online. Because let's face it, when it comes to digital marketing and in particularly in the SEO world, links is one of the most important tracking factors. And I don't know if, you're, if you would agree with me, but I, when, you, when you've done enough technical SEO audit, and you've done enough on page and all of those things, what you actually need in order for you to move the needle in terms of your rankings, in terms of your search performance, is to actually build backlinks. And not only building backlinks, but more so in terms of creating content. Now, before I can go straight to my strategy and the te techniques that I'll be sharing with you, let me just give, uh, let me just ask you some questions here. And can you indicate? your SEO level, um, basically your knowledge about SEO. Is anyone here a beginner or intermediate SEO, or at least you, you've handled enough or at least a few hundred campaigns in the past when it comes to SEO, or you've been doing SEO for like five or 10 years already. So pretty much you're already an advanced marketer. Okay, can you type in the chat please uh, so I can, so I can uh, check? Is anyone here beginner, intermediate, advanced? Good. Plus one, advanced. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Marek, Lucas. All right. How about the others? Feel free. Good. Good. 
I'm good? All right. Okay, beginner, intermediate, advanced. So it's, 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 it's a mix of audience that we have here. So I'll try to put in some advice, put in some tips that are more leaning towards beginner SEOs and try to also share some tips that you haven't heard before or you haven't learned in some SEO articles that have been published online. Now, to set things um, clearly here, I want you guys to understand, uh, I want you guys to know what are the things that you will be discovering from this session. So first thing, what you'll discover is some basic foundational truth in persuading your target audience. And I know it's tough today to get backlinks and link building and content prom promotion, if you will ask me, is more about psychology. And if you will put in psychological triggers in your email outreach copy in how you promote your content and even before you actually create your content, doing some research on it, you'll be able to increase your chances of getting more backlinks, not only backlinks, but also social shares and brand mentions, which build the entire authority of your brand. Another thing that you'll be able to discover here is my audience first content promotion framework. Right, And I know to some of you, you've been reading a lot of content marketing articles from Content Marketing Institute, from Mods, from Ahrefs, from SEMrush. And I'll be giving you my personal framework wherein you can simply just look at the framework, look at the system, and see which of the groups that you need to target or that you want to target for your content marketing campaign. Next is the simple process to find a not so mainstream yet highly engaged influencers. Now, let me ask you this question. Who among you are familiar with the term influencer marketing? Um, here in the Philippines, it's, uh, here in Asia, it's been used widely by enterprise brands and also small businesses. Can you type in the chat, please? Are you familiar with the term influencer marketing? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's if in, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Now, when it comes to influencer marketing, the thing is many small business owners and many startup companies are having a hard time investing in influencer marketing because they have this idea that influ influencer marketing requires a huge budget, that requires expensive you know, uh, resources. And so I'll be sharing with you a process wherein you'll be able to discover not only influencers, but, but highly engaged influencers. Because let's face it, um, when it comes to content promotion, you don't need a long list of influencers and websites. But what you need actually is highly engaged followers or highly engaged uh, content promoters. Okay, next also I'll be sharing with you how to partner with publications and content creators to 10x your content marketing results. And to some of you who've been doing content marketing solo or do it yourself, then I think this section will help you will help you jumpstart into this idea of content collaboration because you don't have to do content marketing alone. You can do it with other partners. You can do it with other vendors. You can do it with other bloggers and publications so that you will not just gain or get um, like a 2x or 5x uh, resource, but pretty much double it and triple the resource that you will get from your campaign. Next, I'll be sharing with you how you can discover journalists without using expensive PR tools. And to some of you have been doing content promotion uh, um, content marketing campaigns in general, maybe some of you are investing in some expensive tools, but did you know that there is one platform wherein you can actually see, uh, we can actually utilize and then discover journalists in your space, in your industry. And the next, I'll be sharing with you an e-commerce strategy wherein it can help you build backlinks to many agents. Now, who among you, uh, you are currently working on a SEO campaign for an e-commerce website or any online store, whether it's an enterprise or that online store is still um, is starting out, it's yet starting out. Okay, can you type in the chat? So in this section, I'll be sharing with you a strategy where you can build back straight to the money pages. 
Okay? Because let's face it, it's very hard to build backlinks to product and to product category, product category pages. All right? And then how you can find audiences for your informational and sales content. Now, if you're ready to learn and discover all of this, Strategies, techniques, and tips. Can you type in the chat ready? So just to have, you know, a little bit of interaction here. Type ready in the chat. All right, good. Thank you, thank you, Andre, Maria, Gorova. All right, thank you. All right, so let me first introduce to you the basic influence principles. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with this uh, book, but this really helped me master persuasion. And it can also help you master persuasion in the area of content marketing campaign. Okay, because the thing is, when you see your inbox right now, most of the emails that you receive are coming from people who really don't know about your brand, who really don't know about who you are, about what you do and so they share their content with the hopes that they will get backlinks or they they will get a response from you okay now how among you you've received an email in the past uh five days or even a week and then you simply just ignore that email or simply move that email to into your spam folder because you know that that email doesn't provide any value to you as a brand or as a person and when you understand the basic influence principle, this can really help you in your content creation, content promotion campaigns. Now, the first in the list, this is based from the book, Robert Cialdini, and Psychology of Influence, uh, the Psychology of Influence of Persuasion. He quoted or he has this framework, the six psychological influence factors, wherein if you apply them, your personal life, your business life, it can help you not just persuade that person, but also to get that person to take an action. Whether you want that person to promote your content, whether you want that person to give you a backlink, whether to, you want that person to simply share your content on social media, knowing these principles, knowing these factors can really help you a lot. Now, so the first factor is what we call reciprocation. Reciprocation. Now, the thing is, when it comes to reciprocation, it's all about giving and getting value. Okay? So even before you create your content, I want you to think of, and I want you to answer this question. What is that one value that you want to give to your audience or to your target customers or to your clients? Okay? Because many SEOs and many marketers today, they start their company with simply just creating content and hopefully, you know, uh, getting all the uh, traction from that. The thing is, if you want to succeed in content marketing, you have to think first of value. What is that value that you want to give to your audience? Where it is a new angle of a story, where it is a new data, a new statistics, whether that is um, interaction and engagement with your audience, it, it all comes down to this thing called value. Before you ask for a backlink, for a social share, for a brand mention, you have to think first of what can I give to this person? What can I give to this group of audience? Okay, are you getting this? Second is what you call commitment and consistency. Okay, commitment and consistency. The thing is, when it comes to content marketing, many SEOs and marketers suddenly stop the moment they don't see any results from their campaign. And I get it. It's because we invest a lot of money and resources, our time, our talent to it, and then suddenly you don't see any results. But the thing is, if you want to really 10x your content marketing, uh, your, your results, what you want to do is to be committed in creating content so that you'll be able to experiment and see results for yourself. You can't simply just read an article and say that this case study works for your industry, that this article works for your brand, you have to test it yourself. And you have to be consistent in your production, in how you execute it, so that you'll be able to see from a general view, from a bigger picture of 
what really makes the difference between your first campaign and then the second campaign and what is something that you need to change or to tweak so that you'll be able to get better results next time. Okay? Third is what we call social proof. Social proof. And I think that social proof is that brands who already have established their authority online, whether that is in a specific industry, whether that's in a specific community, they already have a big advantage. Okay? Let's say, for example, in our community, in the SEO and digital marketing industry, when someone from Ahrefs or Moz or from SSM Rush reach out to you and ask for whether a backlink or ask for a contribution, would it be, would it be considerate of you to give, to take an action? And the answer is yes. It's because they already have established the brand. And it's because there is already social proof that people already are engaging or that people are already using their products, that people are already um, getting some value from what they offer. That itself is a social proof which can entice, which can persuade you and me to, to take whatever action they want to do. And fourth is what you call like it. Okay, like it. Okay. But when, when it comes to liking, it all comes down to understanding who are your followers, current followers, and existing um, brand advocates. Because if they like you, they can give you what you need. And it may, be a, it may seem like a simple thing, but it really matters when it comes to content promotion. Do they like about your brand? Do they like about your content? Do they like how you create the content in such a way that it will engage their them, it will engage their learning style. Next is what we call authority. Okay? Did you, can you build an authority wherein you are consistent in producing linkable assets, consistent in producing content that will be likened and that will be, that will, that are engaging enough and as you consistently build those content assets, you build this thing called authority. And what you call scarcity. For example, if you are promoting a certain piece of content, when you share it to an exclusive group of people, there is thing called scarcity. It means that these people will be able to understand that you don't just simply share it to a massive audience, but to a specific group of people. And scarcity really matters because it, 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 it increases the perceived value of your content. Okay, so uh, have you learned from this six? Uh, which one do you think you can apply to your content promotion campaign? Okay, can you answer in the chat box, please? Do you think you can apply reciprocation? Commitment and consistency, social proof, liking, authority, scarcity. I want to hear you from the chat back. All right. Thank you, Marek. You have this social proof here. All right. Gotcha. Okay, next is this. Let me give you, um, let, let me ask you another question. Have you done any content promotion campaign? Okay. Can you answer me in the chat box? Yes or no? Or you can say, I'm not sure. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Good, good, good. So most of you guys have done it. Now let me share with you the audience content promotion framework. Okay. Okay, so we have here from somebody. Okay, I haven't done any content promotion campaign. Got it. Now, um, this audience first content promotion framework. The idea, the main idea of this is sim it's as simple as this. You don't create content without thinking first of your audience. Okay? So if you would like to get results from your campaign, you have to think first of your audience. And I know this sounds so simple, this sounds so obvious, but many marketers forget this. They start with their content with, under, uh, with identifying what's trending, with identifying what's working already in the market without thinking of audience. When you promote your content, you think of your audience because your audience are the ones who will promote your content. 
<laughs> and, and I know that sounds so obvious, but you have to start with that. So this audience first content promotion framework will discover four groups of people. And if you attack this, and if you attack them with your content, I tell you, they will give you what you want because you get to know their needs. You get to understand what they are looking for in terms of content. You get to understand what they really want in order for you to get backlinks, social shares, brand mentions, whatsoever. Now, the first of the audience first content promotion framework is what we call content influencers. Okay? So we have a content influencer. Now, there are three questions when it comes to identifying content influencers. The first one, of course, is who influences others? Okay, so you cannot consider someone as an influencer if that person doesn't have any following, if that person doesn't have a group of people, doesn't have a tribe, a set of says. So it must be someone who already has a following already. Okay, second is who are other influencers? Once you understand, identify, and discover who are the influencers, you have to know who are other influencers. It may be in the same market, or it may be from other industries, or it may be from other cities, or from other countries as well. And third, you have to understand who are, or you have to discover who influences influencers. Right? So maybe some of you have done content promotion campaign in the past, you know how to discover influencers and how to find other influencers from other markets. But maybe some of you, you are not familiar with the process of identifying who influences influencers. So it, in other words, these are the influencers of the influencers. These are the master influencers. Okay? And what's the analogy? What's the logic behind you? Listen to this. As simple as this. If you will be able to discover and patch and top the master influencers, and these are the people who have huge following, and these are the people who have built their authority, wherein any upcoming authors, any upcoming leaders, and any upcoming authorities are following them, you can already triple and five times and 10x your results. Because the moment you reach out, and the moment you engage and collaborate with, with these master influencers, these master influencers will already promote your content among their peers and among their networks, which include other influencers as well. Are you getting this? If you're still getting me, uh, if you're still following, can you type yes in the chat? Okay, so in discovering content influencers, number one, who are the influencers? Who are the other influencers from other markets and countries? Depending on your industry, of course. And third is who influences influencers? Now, if you're using a tool, I really recommend uh, later, I'll, I'll be sharing you with you a tool. Okay, so you start identifying influencers through Google search. All right. So um, if I'm targeting, let's say, food and beverage CEOs, and simply just you know uh, do a Google search using those uh, using that key phrase, and then by simply looking at the search results, I'll be able to see uh, some articles about that and maybe a list of um influencers maybe a list of people that i need to follow and so for this example we have foodprocessing.com it's one of the major i would say you know uh publication in this uh market okay so i would consider he, this website as one of the influencers not only because they have huge following but if you look at their uh backlink profile but when you look at their search for uh, estimated search traffic you'll be able to see at least a glimpse of the authority that they've built already. Okay. Now from this, you already discover your influencers. Now the next thing you want to do is to discover other influencers. And so how, how can you do that? You can use a tool uh, like Spark Toro. Now how many of you are familiar with Spark Toro or have used already this tool or product? Can you type yes? Or me in the chat box, M-E. Okay. All right. How about the others? Okay. You can see answers from other participants. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. No, no, no. All right. Okay. Now, Spark Toro is as simple as this. 
is a tool that helps you discover influencers, not only influencers, but also websites and authorities in your industry. Okay, so if you're doing some kind of research, persona research, if you're doing some kind of discovery uh, in terms of content promotion, then you can check out Spark Toro. Now, for this specific example, you use Spark Toro to find people who follow an influencer. Okay, again, you use this tool for you to discover groups of people who follow a specific influencer. Okay? Because what you want to do is to understand how this particular influencer engage their followers. Do they use some kind of hashtags? Do they use some words in their bio? Do they use some, you know, some kind of uh, phrases in their, uh, in their posting? And the moment you understand how they engage their followers, you'll be able to also capture their followers as well. Are you getting this? So as simple as if you know your influencer and how they engage your followers, then you can replicate the same strategy to your own campaign. Now, another example that you can use uh, when, when you use Spark Torah is that you'll be able to understand the audience of an influencer. Okay? Specifically, who are the other influencers? Who are the other publications? Who are the other websites that this audience who follow this influencer also follow. I'm not sure if I'm confusing you with my statement, but as simple as this, you will be able to discover other influencers and other publications. Okay? Because if, they have, if this audience has the same behavior, has the same engagement, has the same lifestyle, then you can also look at other publications and other websites that you can also engage with. Okay? Other thing is that you'll be able to understand your audience from a behavioral or psychological perspective. Okay? And that means you'll be able to know what are the podcasts they listen to, what are the YouTube channels they subscribe to, and, and specifically for PR, digital PR, is what are the press accounts they view. Okay? So you under, the more you understand your audience, the better it is. Because the more you can influence them later on in your content promotion campaign. And what I like with Spark Toro is this. Okay. Now, when you do Google search, you will not be able to find every publication in your industry, right? And to some of you, that's already obvious, right? But, um, but when you use Spark Toro, it has this feature called Hidden Gem, which means that it gives you websites, it gives you publications that you don't normally see online, okay? And this is what I called earlier as the not so mainstream, but highly engaged influencers. Are you getting this? They may not be the influencers who have millions of followers. They may, be, they may simply just have like thousands of followers, but it is highly engaged. It is a highly engaged group. Like they have a highly engagement rate, like 31, 30, 25%. Okay? Meaning if you target and collaborate with these influencers, then more likely you'll be able to get more opportunities from them. Okay? So the first one is what we call content influencers. The second is what we call content amplifier groups. Okay? Content amplifier groups. Now, there are two questions that you need to answer when it comes to discovering content amplifier groups. The first one is, who are the authors and content creators, content creators I can build relationships with? Okay, again, thinking about your audience, I want you to think about your industry, your brand, your SEO campaign, okay, your client, if you're in um, an SEO agency, working in an SEO agency. Who are the authors and content creators I can build content creators I can build relationships with, okay? Because if these people can amplify your, your content, then I tell you it will double your results because they already not just have built the following already, but they have built such an authority wherein people follow them because of their expertise and experience. And that's what you want when it comes to collaboration. You don't simply collaborate with anyone you collaborate with people who have built 
an authority, expertise, and experience. Secondly, what you want to answer is, who can I partner with to create and promote industry content? Okay, so the first one is building relationships, which you will use in your content promotion. The second thing, the second, the, 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 the second tier is the people that you can partner, not just in the content promotion side, but also even, even so in the content creation um, area, all right? So even before you create content, these are the people who already know your stuff. They already they have seen your content because they've been partnering with you throughout the entire content marketing strategy. Okay? Now, in order for you to discover your content uh, amplifier groups, later I'll be sharing that with you. Now, uh, let me ask you a question. Who among you have received this kind of, or kind of like this kind of email? Okay, you receive an email um, from someone who wants to do a guest post on your client's website or who wants to do a guest post on your personal blog. Have you, re have you received one in the past uh, weeks or months? Can you type in the chat? Okay. And then the moment you read that, you immediately ignore, you immediately delete it. <laughs> yeah, you're sure. I delete it right away, always. Thank you, Andre. Um, and... What's the reason? Okay, and most of you guys would agree with me. It's because the reason is this: there's no value here. Okay, and even even they say that they will provide you with topics. When you look at the topics, when you look at the titles of their submitted guest posts or what they really want to write about for your blog you see that these topics are ge generic, meaning that they are not pertaining to your industry, that they don't really know about your audience. It's simply a generic uh, list of topics. Now, when you partner with target publications, what you wanna do is to understand what is the audience of my target publication? Okay, I say it again. I want you to answer this question. Who is or what is my target audience? What is the target audience of my target publication? Okay, so you have to understand the reader's mindset. You have to understand the psychology, the demographics of the target publication. Because before you, co you can collaborate with, the target, with, with that publication, you have to understand their audience. And the way to do that is to simply use Ahrefs. Now, who among you are familiar with Ahrefs or have done any SEO activities using this tool? Ahrefs, can you type in the chat? Yes, yes. If you are using currently in your SEO campaign, Ahrefs. Or if you're not familiar, you can simply, I'm not familiar with this. Okay, got it. Now, Ahrefs has this, what this thing called a feature content gap analysis. Okay. Now, using content gap analysis feature, it can help you, listen to this, it can help you discover topics, keywords that your competitors are currently ranking for, but your website doesn't rank for yet. Okay, so these are the keywords and topics your competitors are currently ranking for. All right. Um, and then you look at this, um, and then it can help you discover topics that your website doesn't rank for. And so it gives you now topics that you can target and that you can submit as guest post ideas. Okay. All right. So uh, give me like 10 minutes, okay, 15 minutes for this one. Okay. So partner with target publications. And so using Ahrefs content gap analysis, it can help you create a list of topics that you can submit to your target publication. All right, so let's say for example, if I have a personal development book, one of the top publications that I want to target is Lidex. So they list and they contain and then, and um, they include all of the leadership authors in their space and so, one of the case studies that we did is that is we 
collaborate with the authors and the experts uh, uh, that already contributed to Lidex.com, which is actually a publication. So we simply reach out to them and ask for the, some of their tips and which help us to create the content and collaborate with them. And the moment we publish it, the good thing with this campaign is that it helps us to generate backlinks both from our blog and, and from our client's website as well. Okay, next is what we call last two. We have is we have is content seekers. So there are two questions that you need to answer when it comes to discovering content seekers. The first one is what do people are searching for? Okay, what do people are searching for? Because the moment you understand what do people are searching for, you can create a content that will be referenced by these publishers, by these content creators. Secondly, is what words and phrases people are using to discover your pages or products or services. And to some of you who have done SEO campaigns already, doing keyword research, you already know how to use it. But when it comes to content creation, you can think of the types of content. For example, you can think of statistics, templates, letters, and proposals. And these are the types, and these are the keywords and phrases people are using for when they want to reference a specific article or that you want to include as part of their content. So when you create a content, you can think of, is there any statistics? Is there any templates? Is there any letters and proposals that, that I can include in my page so that people and other industry publication, publishers will be able to reference it for their content as well? Okay, um, it's not a tool. It is simply a Google search, all right? so it's. Simply using Moz bar as part of the search function. Okay, so this is just an example. Next is next is discovering jour journalists who, uh, to some of you who are doing digital PR campaigns and have been using expensive tools. One of the things that you can utilize is Twitter. Okay, and by using simple keywords. You'll be able to discover journalists in your space, in your industry, in your market. And even in the, if you're doing local SEO, um, you can discover local and regional publishers. So when you type in and use these keywords, looking to speak to, looking to interview, is there anyone expert and can you recommend? And then use the hashtag journal request. Um, the thing is, you'll be able to discover more journalists on Twitter. Than any other publication, uh, than any other platforms when it comes to digital PR, right? So you don't have to invest a lot in expensive PR tools. Simply just use Twitter for you to discover this content seeker. And then lastly, I'm going to the last part. All right. So we'll talk about content linkers. Okay. Now, quick question here: Do you know anything about link building in SEO? Yes, no, a little bit. Okay. Can you give me a quick reply? Only have a few minutes. All right, a little, a little, a little, yes, tiny bit. Good, good, good. Now, okay, backlinks are basically any links that other websites provide to you. Okay, so let's say you have a health blog, then what you want to do is to get backlinks from other health websites, other health blogs, so that you'll be able to get some link juice and link equity, and your website will be able to rank higher in search. As simple as that. Okay, so discover your content linkers. Two questions that you need to answer. Who are the linkers in your industry? Who are the linkers in your industry? Second is, what types of content do they resonate with? Because different, listen to this, different groups of people have different resonations, have different engagement. Okay, what works for content seekers may not work for content seekers, but resonate with content influencers may not resonate with content leakers. Okay, so different groups of content promoters have different engagement and behavior. They have different wants and needs, in other words. Okay, to so find and discover linkable um, uh, linkers or content leakers, you can check this list. Okay, later to some of you have been asking me, um, uh, what's the slide share link or how can you download the, this presentation later I'll, I'll share with you the link 
Okay, so these are the highly linkable audiences. Okay, so when you create a content that speaks directly to these people, then you can increase the potential that your page will get backlink. Okay, so let me give you an example. Uh, this is for one of our clients. So we created a page, we created a content about uh, sleeping, but we targeted it to parents because we know parents have large groups of linkable um, of linkers. And so when we create the content, we already think parents in our mind. And so creating the content, it speaks to their language, it speaks to their needs, it speaks to their wants of these parents. Okay. We also created a content specific to people uh, who have this problem, who have post-traumatic stress disorder. So we don't just create generic content, we create content speaking to a targeted audience. Okay. Another example is when you find linkable audience and you, or when you find content linkers, what you want to do is to, especially for online stores, is to find specific pages. For example, there, if you would like to get backlinks to your money pages, there is a type of page from different vendors and from different partners, whether that is a manufacturer, a retailer, and this page is what we call where to buy products. Okay, so as simple as this, if I am a manufacturer, I will create this page where to buy product and I will list down all of my suppliers. Okay, so that my visitors and my readers and my potential customers would, would be able to know where they can find my product. Okay, you can also find that in transport options where you can find or where you can buy. Okay, it's also applicable in uh, college and high school uh, websites, music stores. So when you are doing SEO for e-commerce um, clients, then what you wanna do is to find this type of pages and then reach out to them and ask for links. And given that they are recommending specific products or categories, you'll already have a chance that you will get backlinks from them. So these are some of the keywords that you can use, where to buy, online retailers, online dealers, final products, additional retailers, internet sellers, preferred retailers, okay? So last question for this one is, among four audience, which one do you think you can target for your content? Okay, can you type in the chat? Would you like to, uh, for your next content marketing campaign, which one of the four audiences that I shared in my audience first content promotion framework that you would like to target in your next campaign? Is it content influencers, content amplifiers, content seekers, or content linkers. Okay, can you type in the chat? Just very quick reply before we go to Q&A. Linkers, good, thank you, Mark. Okay, linkers, linkers, all right. Now, so what you discovered throughout the session, and I hope you learned a lot from this, you've discovered basic foundational influence principles that we will, that we can use for our outreach copies when we send emails. And even before we create the content, we already have this psychological triggers in mind. We already discovered the audience first content promotion framework. So we have content linkers, seekers, influencers, and amplifiers. You're able to know the process to find highly engaged influencers. They may not have huge following, but they have highly engaged followers. And we were able to know how to discover um, topics that we can use as guest post ideas and send it to our target publications. And also, um, we discovered some basic you know, strategy on how to find where to buy uh, pages for us to build backlinks to our product and category pages. And find journalists using Twitter. And lastly, we discovered how to utilize co-marketing co -marketing campaigns. And so to all of you who are um, we're looking for ways, um, we're looking to, to download this presentation. You can simply check the link, Bitly Promote Content Framework, do a screenshot of this slide. And then if you want to know, uh, want to get these 50 outreach emails that we use 
um, in our agency. You can simply download it as well. Yeah, and so if you have any questions, feel free to send it here and um, I think that Daniel will be able to, yeah, add it. Yes, thank you, Vanchito. And we'll now go to Slido and we don't have much time, but let's do at least two questions. So um, I have seen one interesting question is that uh, if you are uh, doing the email outreach, do you use the client's email or do you use your own agency email? Good question. Um, if the brand, if our client has established their brand already, meaning that when we reach out to um, influencers, any linkers, uh, if they already, there is already a perceived authority, then we'll, we will use um, the email address, the corporate email address. Um, another, uh, so the answer to that is it depends. It depends on the authority of the brand. Secondly is it depends on the relationships that you've built with your with publication. And given that we've built already thousands of relationships, we use our own agency email addresses. So yeah, it depends. Okay, thank you. And how about the latest link spam update from Google and changes in algorithm to um, from Google side to better uh, evaluate the backlinks and, and their relation to the promotion? Uh, have you seen some changes or have you been influenced or one of your clients influenced by this update? Yeah, of course. Um, to some clients uh, who have used, uh, who've done any link building campaign, uh, specifically targeting irrelevant uh, websites, they've seen negative changes in terms of search performance. And of course, uh, we all know this. Uh, we can use a lot of metrics, MOZ, HS, but the number one thing that we need to understand is when it comes to, um, to links is it's more of relevance than, than big uh, metrics. So when we use, when you find relevant uh, blogs, it's, uh, it gives more authority to the site that we're clicking to. Okay, thank you. And um, okay, how about the evaluation of backlink quality and the value? So you have told us how to do the outreach, how to do the content promotion, but then how do you decide about where to put backlinks and where where maybe uh, don't or or maybe change change it to some other website or something else how, how do you do you do you have some just really quick points that you could say about link quality and and the value of it sure so um, as an agency we use relevance of course it should be relevant to the client we use hrefs right now domain rating so any domain uh, any websites that has domain rating of 40 and above we already include as part of our list uh, we don't work with any pbn or private blog networks we try to reach out to bloggers who actually own the website and we try to get contextual backlink. Okay, thank you very much. And let's do the last question. So I think this uh, topic of uh, this uh, uh of the spam links in, in Google Search Console is quite uh, popular still. And, and many people, I mean, it's, it's controversial. Even people from Google say that they don't use it or they don't recommend to use it that Google can now catch up with the with the spec spam links automatically even if somebody is producing them in large quantities so do you use the disavowing still or or do you just let it pass um I cannot speak on my uh on my end given we don't have enough uh case studies here but uh we don't use um uh, we just let it uh pass by so as uh, we're really focusing on acquiring better quality links than simply disavowing all of the unwanted links. Okay. Okay, Vencito, thank you very much for uh, pre presenting today. This was uh, another session of SEOs RAS that we uh, are doing virtually this year. And uh, next one we'll have in September with Pavel Unger, a Czech uh, consultant. Uh, on SEO and thank you again for participating to everybody and thank you Venchito for coming today. Thank you very much Nina and have a great day to everyone. Okay, bye-bye, thank you.